Hotep Boo, and welcome to our next installment of the adventures of Little Beetle as he learns the sky sciences. Tonight his teacher discusses with him different ways used by the ancient African gay masters of Egypt to measure points in the sky so we can know how to direct the angle of our temples to time our star rituals properly. So, little beetle, says teacher, we last learned about the meridian, the magical snake that binds the north true direction to the south true direction. Now let's learn about how we measure the points in the sky. We use a net, which some call a grid, to capture the location of the movements of the starry beings. There are several nets we use. One is called the horizon coordinate system, the net of the aket. Aket means horizon. There are different nets. There is one using the celestial ecliptic as the basis of measurement, called the celestial ecliptic coordinate system. There's also the equatorial coordinate system, using the equator as the foundation of your measurements. There's even a galactic coordinate system. So we have a net based upon the horizon, called the horizon system. We have a net based upon the ecliptic, called the ecliptical coordinate system. We have a net that we cast upon the sky, based upon the equator coordinate system. But tonight, let's observe the net of the horizon the Aket. Now, this system is very simple to understand. You need to know a few key words to get your bearings in how to capture the sky positions from this net's point of view. The first word is azimuth. Azimuth. It means a compass bearing. The azimuth is measured using true north as zero and then increasing your numbers going clockwise from zero towards the east. So we have zero at true north and you go eastward and you see this next line, this next vertical line here reads 30 degrees right here. It may be hard to read but it says 30. So from zero vertical of true north. Here we're going 30 degrees to this line. And the next part of the net goes 30 degrees more towards the east, or clockwise, to this line of the net, 60 degrees. So azimuth means how many degrees on the net are you going east from true north? East, to the right, to the right. This is 30 degrees to the right of east, 60 degrees to the right of east. It's a compass bearing on a map or on your compass, that's all it is. That's called azimuth. The next phrase you have to learn is altitude or elevation, which we've discussed before. Elevation means how high above my horizon is something. Elevation or altitude refers to how high above my local horizon does a star or a planet appear. So for example, if we look here at this point, that's the North Pole Star Polaris. Let's see how high above my local landscape it is. Well this N would be zero. This is 10 degrees above my local horizon. This is 30 degrees above my local horizon and Polaris is right there. So it's 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 and a half. So Polaris is about 34 and a half degrees above my horizon. That's its altitude or elevation. So if you wanted to know something beneath your altitude beneath your horizon that's called the depression degree. So if I remove 
for example, the horizon, you'll see here the number 0. And if I lift this for you, you see here the number 0. Then it reads negative 10 here. Then this is negative 20 here. So these are called the depression degrees. So this area is 10 degrees beneath my feet. This is 20 degrees beneath my feet here, minus 20. So if it's above my horizon, it's called a positive altitude or positive elevation. If it's beneath my feet, it's called a negative elevation or negative altitude or even a depression degree. So you've learned azimuth, which is how far to the right is something of true north zero point. We learned altitude or elevation, which means how high above my horizon. We learned depression or negative elevation, how below my feet is something. And our final word, and let's remove this back down to there and add our horizon again. There we go. There's a horizon again. Let's learn our last term for the horizon coordinate system. It's called zenith. Zenith means above my head, the point right above my head. The zenith always refers to the viewer and it's related to you. It's going to always be 90 degrees from your feet, from your horizon. So let's take a look at the zenith. You see we're going up above your head and you see right above your head is 90 degrees in the center of this circle. That's the viewer's zenith. And as we come down, we're coming closer down to the horizon here. This point is right above your head at the location of this map, the sky map we're at. And as we go down, we would come towards your actual point in the sky that meets your horizon. This becomes very important because we align our temples to where a particular star hits the horizon, the Akhet, at a certain date of our sacred calendar. A certain day of the year, a star always cuts the horizon on a certain meridian line or a certain azimuth point every year. So in the first day of summer, certain stars always hit our city on a certain point on the horizon on the azimuth, compass direction. And we align our temples to that part of the horizon, which stays valid for about a hundred years. Then the star slowly shifts on the horizon, shifting its azimuth, its compass bearing, over certain centuries. We then would realign our temples and build an annex, slightly angled, to capture the star's beam at that new azimuth point on the horizon. So azimuth is very much horizon based. Change your city, change your location, change your elevation above sea level, and you change the altitude and azimuth of a particular star body. So hopefully this made it very simple to understand the Akhet horizon coordinate system. It's very useful for aligning our temples to know when to do our rituals, when to pull in a channel of energy from the Bagiwari and Anu into the temple, into the drums and the voodoos in that temple, the herbs, the roots, the gems, the images, so that star's light can beam upon the wall of the temple, energizing that statue or that carving with the chi of that star. This is a very ancient science to us and we aligned all of our monuments to these azimuthal positions. So you will now be able to read our scrolls which describe 
the azimuth and the altitude of a star. And you'll know, ah, if it says azimuth is 13 degrees, that means it's 13 degrees eastbound from true north pole star. And if it says it has an altitude of 42, that means you know it's 42 steps above my horizon, like a ladder. And that's it. It's a very simple system. And zenith means above my head. The star that is the zenith for me would be the star directly over my head. So in this case, the zenith star would be right here. This star in the foot of Perseus, right there. So review this, azimuth, how many degrees east of true north is something, altitude or elevation, how high above my feet is something, depression, how far beneath my feet is something, zenith, what is the point directly over my head? If we have a thousand people holding hands in a row, they will each have a different zenith because they read the star directly over their particular head. And that's it. So review, study, and may use the net of Aket, the horizon, to capture the sky. And one final point on the Aket. Let's go back to north. The Aket here means the line of consciousness. So when something has an altitude or elevation above your feet, we say it's above the line between sleep and waking. The horizon or aket, and let's bring it up here north, there you see it better. This northern line of the horizon is called the line of consciousness. Beneath it is the subconscious realm. The stars beneath that are the stars more active subconsciously in you more numinally or in the mind and the spirit. The stars above you are stars that are conscious. Stars that are northbound to you that you can see are stars that you have grounded more. These are stars that you work with more in a material grounded earthly way. Recall the earth for the north is the land of the feet the north is the bottom of the sky to us, the flooded place, the Mechit. So this means the place of materialism. So the northern stars of northern altitude or northern elevation are stars that you can work more with in a material way. The stars in depression or negative elevation are stars that are sleeping in the underworld. They're in the dream time. They're subconscious forces that you have to use meditation to access. So, how high above the horizon of your feet a star is tells us how grounded the star is. The more north a star is, the closer to zenith a star is, the more you're able to ground it in a material way, in a physical way. The more depression a star is, the deeper beneath your feet is, the more you can work with that star in the duat, the dream time through meditation and spiritual mystical work. So recall most of all the horizon line, Aket, shown as a lion often in our ancient teachings is the line of wakefulness. And if it's above the line, you can ground the stars above the line on Earth. If it's depression or beneath the line, you ground it through spiritual power. So, learn these secrets well. Dwawend Hotepu.